Johnson is not isolated, that it happened again. Man, did not tell y'all that? Following Shanquella's what? murder. Uh-oh. What if I told you that on Sunday, October 30th, in Mexico, 1,200 miles from San Jose del Cabo, a woman died at the hands of two people who were supposed to be her friends. Days go by, then Ooh. two cyclists discovered her body riddled with obvious signs of trauma on the side of the highway. They took pictures of her and posted them online. Her friends found the pictures and identified her. And for days, radio silence. No news, no answers, no word. Nothing from the prosecutor's office. Sound familiar? Public outcry began to swell through social media and the community protested. And all of this before- What? Look at that. Y'all just replaced that name with Chanquilla. It's the same thing. And remember I told y'all how Mexico um, have their own problems with this, with these femicides and stuff? And why would they use their resources? They're already a poor country to come over here and try to, um, you know. Mainstream press picked up the story. In response to the pressure, the prosecutor's office released an autopsy report that stated there were no signs <gasps> of violence. And it said that she died while choking on her own spew from extreme alcohol What? Oh, okay. You really, can you believe this? <laughs> so they just got them a cookie cutter little thing here, right? Alcohol poison, right? Look at there. Look at there. This sounds like, you know how they got those little, um, underground bbl clinics where they're doing these illegal butt <laughs> injections you know what i mean like you if you need to get rid of a body or you need an excuse or an alibi just come here and here you pay the money and then boom here's the cookie cutter alibi we get you the death certificate here we put on their extreme alcohol intoxication this here has been getting people you know it's been getting people by we can just use this I knew it. I felt like this was something that had been done too. And it takes me back to us hearing somebody's voice on there saying, we got our first body, 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 body. Right. And then now look at this. This is some stuff y'all. Kylie said, OMG. Yes. OMG. Now I was, y'all saw me in, in the beginning. I was feeling like, okay, we're not going to uncover nothing new. There's, Nothing more to do here. And then boom. So y'all right. We still got to keep going for this. Look here. A dangerous says something interesting. Elise mom is revered Reverend Annette Battle and Winter's mom is Minister Monica V. Stipe, um, Stipeson. I wonder if they reached out to Shanquilla's family. That's a good question. Yeah. How much support did they give to the family? So a reverend and a minister, huh? huh. What's up, LeMike? Said, uh, did the cops find a big surprise when they put <laughs> the <laughs> um, No, we haven't gotten it. We still, you know, that's still just up in for questions. <laughs> yeah, still up for questions here. Hey, Reed, what's going on? Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hey, y'all, what's going on here? <laughs> Jinju said the thing with the feds is you never know when they're going to show up with the cuffs. Yeah, trust they will get them when they least expect it. <laughs> and I know they're scared because they don't know when it'll happen. That's true. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, but in the meantime, we find out all these little things, y'all. I, I don't know. I think we need to go on back to that whole um no mo go to mexico <laughs> no mo mexico no go to mexico no 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 i mean shoot hmm yeah i i yeah i don't know yeah exactly yeah be be leery somebody inviting for mexico trip <laughs> one bbl case <laughs> are allegedly uh <laughs> recently R.D. allegedly recently. Hmm. You see, a dangerous, great question. Yeah, I, I totally agree. That was a great question. You see, a BBO patient was expired when assaulted. Wow. Wow. 
All right, let's see here. Chelly Bay. Um, Child Bay, Chelly Bay. Um, the title says just rice instead. Uh oh. On my thing here, title um, <laughs> instead of justice. Thank you. I was hoping it was not a diss. Uh, looks like an innocent error. <laughs> let me go fix that. Okay, let me see where my title at. I can't even see. Oh, it sure do. <laughs> Thank you. I'm old. I just made 52 today, y'all. And these eyes is dim. This is actually my third live today. Let me hear it. Oops. I sure appreciate you for saying that because I wouldn't have uh, been able to see that. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, oh, I didn't even finish the thing. I ain't got no description or nothing. Oops, I didn't even do that. Thank you. I hadn't even finished um doing the thing. I didn't. Yeah. This was because Courtney, <laughs> Courtney and somebody else came over there to my live that I did earlier today <laughs> and demanded justice for Shanquilla. So I kind of, this was at the last minute. I kind of put this together. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. So I got it. Here we go. Now, where was I at on the video? Here we go. All right. We must have a few more of these. Ernie Williams. Hey, welcome. Says, no, they have not expressed any condolences to the Robson family, according to Mr. Robson. Okay. See there? Somebody always know. And Max says, clearly going to Mexico for birthdays or drinks is out. Exactly. Just even thinking about it makes me feel suspicious. Anybody asking me about some Mexico. Jen Ju says, once the family hires the um P.I., this case is going to be busted wide open. It said, oh, I just noticed that. <laughs> okay. Let's see. I'm not surprised the moms are ministers, evangelists. Yes, I know it'd be a lot of fake phoniness up in every the um, leaders in that whole thing, too. All love, natural beauty, Arvin. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And happy birthday to me again. Thank y'all so much. And let's see what this here um about to uncover. I feel like we about to we you know about to uncover some new stuff here. The family protested this idea that no crime was committed because they had the pictures showing the bruises on her body. Then Mexico City's mayor wow. stepped in to help. She recommended that the family do a second autopsy. And when that autopsy came back, it confirmed blunt force trauma and concluded what multiple trials as the cause of death. The mayor then accuses Morelos prosecutor's office of corruption and wanting to cover up the femicide. She wow. then launched an investigation into the prosecutor's office that later concluded that the victim had died of multiple force trauma. Let's take a closer look. This is from Reuters.com. And Mayor Claudia Scheinbaum is speaking at a press conference here. Wow. She says, it was the duty of the Morelos prosecutor's office to carry out the investigation. Then she says, without the intervention from Mexico City, this femicide would have gone unpunished. During the investigation, a video emerged showing the male perpetrator, one of the two <gasps> supposed friends. Oh, y'all see it? Look at there. The only difference is that these are Mexican people and and Chanquilla was black. Those were those were those were the same people out there holding up the um, protest signs and doing all that stuff, just like we was over here doing. Wow! So this is like a thing over there. Look here, this is Shanquilla right there. That's her, same person. Carrying the this victim's super sad. body, super already sick. with rigor mortis, from mm. his apartment to the trunk of his <gasps> car. You can see it here. Sure During can. the press conference, the mayor revealed security footage showing a man who claimed to be the victim's friend carrying a body from a Mexico City apartment wow. after she disappeared on October 30th. Check this out. This is from El País, a global periodical. The death of Ariadna, 27, has shaken a country that first saw wow. a man mourn her death on camera and days later saw the same man 
carry her lifeless body while getting rid of it. Do you see that? So the male perpetrator, her supposed friend, publicly mourned her, made Instagram posts of condolence. But wow. in, private, in his apartment's garage, he was seen on camera loading her body into the trunk of a car. Wow. When I saw how eerily close this case tracked Shenquella's case, yes. I thought, oh my goodness, how can this be? The victim was violently murdered by so-called friends. Then they lied about the story through social media to cover themselves. Yeah. Then the Mexican authorities state no signs of violence and cite extreme alcohol intoxication wow. as the cause of death. Then a video emerges exposing the guilty friends. Then friends, family, and the media protest because of visible signs of trauma. Yeah. A second autopsy concludes violence is the cause of death and an investigation is launched for corruption. Wow. There is no way this is a coincidence. It was 24 hours later, 1,200 miles away wow. in another Mexican state. What's the connection? So I kept digging and I came across Debony Escobar. Debony was found deceased inside a motel water tank in the city of Monterrey. What? At first, Mexican authorities claimed her death was accidental, stating she had fallen into a tank and drowned. But a second autopsy found no water in her lungs and signs of multiple traumas of the worst kind. She was violated battered and slain in a different location and then placed in the water tank where she was found. Her final autopsy concluded that she had died from asphyxiation. Then I found Yolanda Martinez, who disappeared on March 31st in San Nicolas Nuevo León. After several weeks of searching, she was located in a vacant lot in the municipality oh of Oh my Juarez. goodness. Authorities said it was self-deletion, but her relatives are seeking justice. They say no, she was slain. Her family also oh. says it took authorities two weeks to even visit them. Then I found the case wow. of Leslie who was found asphyxiated in a phone box in Mexico City. Her family was first told by the investigators that she committed self-deletion. <gasps> then the authorities, who eventually ruled her death a femicide, took two years <gasps> to apologize. What? And then I found Maria Fernanda Cabreras, 27 years old. In this case, her father had to galvanize the community to search for Maria because the local authorities oh, did not goodness. show up for three days <gasps> to begin searching. And then there's the case of Ariadna Lopez that happened 24 hours following Shanquella's murder. And there are so many others. Wow. Enough to know that this is no coincidence. Yes. Remember y'all when I showed y'all that video that showed Mexico is number five in the world of countries in femicide, number five in the world. And then this here backs it up. I mean, she just named off a bunch of them and then one within days of Shanquilla. This is, this is just happened. This is a normal thing, you know, and this is, this is very eye opening, y'all. This is very eye opening. So we know that Mexico has its own problem with femicide. We know that it's a poor country and we know that it's full of corruption. Why do we think that Mexico is going to use their resources to extradite and prosecute and, and imprison and punish these American people, these black Americans for unaliving a black woman? They're not even prosecuting their own people for unliving their women. And they have this whole system already set up to just say it was alcohol. I mean, like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> come on. I think, y'all, we need to go keep focusing on getting justice here, that they committed some kind of, of crime here that they could be punished for here. I think we would feel, I would feel more like uh, we're going to get some justice served, you know, get them some federal time or something. But I don't see Mexico doing anything for it. They're not doing anything for their own people. They can't. Ernie Williams says, happy birthday to you. I pray that you are blessed and see many, many more. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, I accept your prayers and your birthday wishes. Appreciate it. Let's see. Mona D, hello all around Natural Beauty RN. Thank you. Hello, hello to you as well. Thank y'all so much. And Re. Still Bloom says, it has dried up, but history is always helpful. Bio's interest. Yes. Hello, everyone. And Ty Lieber says, I just went to 
Tulum, Mexico for my b birthday in October. Wow. Okay. <laughs> that was very, that was very close, you know? And, um, yeah, you know, I was interested to, um, you know, actually one live there for a while to, um, you know, help for learning Spanish. I had wanted to live in another country, but I think I'm going to go to Colombia and see what's like over there. My oldest son's over there and he is saying it's a wonderful spot. So I'll, I'll give it a check out and I'll, I'll let y'all know if we need to be passport bros and hoes and and, and move move abroad, <laughs> get up out of here. <laughs> and see, Todd even says, wow. Yeah, that was extreme. Thank you so much. Happy birthday again. I appreciate that. That was eye opening, right? Like I wasn't expecting to get that information. Like even though we kind of stumbled on it, like I said, a few days ago. And then also we saw that Mexico has a special place in their heart. They have a special camp for these uh, transgender ex um, slave uh, slave workers, sex workers, transgenders, where they you know have a safe place to you know go to so if they're not prosecuting the people for the the men for these homicides and two they got a special softness for these transgenders y'all you know mexico we don't need to be you know demanding justice for mexico <laughs> you know i think we may be waiting to some um you know hell freezes over or something like that before that happens uh, re says someone even talked about the fact that we traveled to cabo the industry and the impact of this case on it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were talking about that too, as far as like not traveling there to um, try to boycott it, hit them in the pockets. At Ty Liba said, did you feel safe <laughs> the entire time? Good question, MAC. Did you feel safe? <laughs> Maybe not, huh? You see, Ernie said, this is why Kali set it up like he did. I agree. He probably already knew about this. Like, this ain't nothing new. People been probably, you know, doing like I was telling y'all about my um, son's sister. It was a strategy to move the body around like that. That way, you know, nobody would want to deal with it because it's really, you know, well, hey, she don't live in our state, not part of our jurisdiction. So it's like kicking the can down down the street down the street and nobody's dealing with it right so you know you just go drop off your bodies down there in mexico you can pay them the money and get you a nice little get out of jail free card because you know the person just died of alcohol poisoning that's what happens you go to mexico you have a drink and you die of alcohol poisoning so you know so they had this whole little setup so people already know you know, that what you can do and get away with from over there. Thank you. Uh, and Jen Juice says, I bet he was in competition with Quilla's clothing line. <laughs> um, Quilla came up with the idea first and he copied. She had to help him set up his website and help him through the process. Quilla business was thriving. Yeah. Like we said, jealousy used to be the root cause to all these things. Um, so that's why it's very important to be able to look, listen, and feel for these vibes and stuff. You know, like I always tell y'all, whenever you walk into a room after someone's been arguing, you need to have that radar on so you can feel the tension in there and know when you've walked into something, right? So you need to um, exercise that muscle, exercise it. And Ty Liba says, in Mac, yes, everything was secure. We had private, uh oh, private transportation from the airport to the villa. No, I'm joking. And I've uh, been to Mexico five times with no safety issues since 2000. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Jinju said uh, he wasn't. And best wishes, Natural Beauty. Thank you so much. I sure appreciate it. Yep. Uh, Kali's clothing line is cheesy, just like his raggedy rat face. <laughs> That's my gin juice. <laughs> yes, it's not safe. Okay, so people still aren't feeling safe to go to Mexico. I know I'm not, especially, you know, I wouldn't. Mm-mm. No, no gracias. You see, I wouldn't go down there even if the trip was free. I heard that. That's that's Tavia saying that. I agree with you 100%. 
I'm going to go to Belize to visit my aunt. I would like to go to Belize. I'd like to go there. See, Talib said, I spoke to someone recently who is in Spain. I'm looking into property in Tumala and Barcelona. Okay, cool. MX said, okay, it sounds like you both implanted and covered all safety bases. Okay. All right, Ted, let's see here. Mr. Matthews, all right. A new name here. Good evening, all. Good evening, Mr. Matthews, and welcome to the All Around Natural Beauty RN channel, where we're passionate about healing one victim at a time. And Bree says, hell of a chick, great video. Yep. Yeah, that was good. And this here is um, Sleuthy Lucy. Um, here, this is a new person here. This is our first time um, checking checking her out. And so far, I am intrigued. It, it kind of got off to like of a slow start, but I'm loving this part at the end. This is some definitely some new information, and it just reinforces you know what we've been knowing already about Mexico. And Lakeisha says the men came. Uh, be very can be excuse me the men can be very aggressive i won't be going back exactly and if they already got um signs and symptoms of being aggressive and they already knowing that they could unalive you and get away with it i wouldn't even be talking to any of them at all because you know mm -mm. when we saw that one video how casual the guys were is about you know putting hands on the women and stuff like that yeah, you know, they get annoyed at you and all that kind of stuff. You don't even know you <laughs> sitting up here, you know, rolling the dice on your life. You know, I said you only have to be unalive once. So, yes, I wouldn't go there. Either. At Gen Juice, pack me and in your luggage. <laughs> OK. All right. Uh, Mr. Matthew said, you think with a luxury villa business, cameras were nearly everywhere or were there? This alone leads um, trepidation with going there. Yeah. There was some talk that, you know, that the villa was the one that helped them to arrange it, that there were some, um, you know, some shadows of doubts be over the villa. Like they, you know, had some shady business and stuff happening because um, one video we saw, it showed that um, the maid, Lucy, Miss Lucy, you know, maybe the one that was um, put them in touch with the cover up team, you know. <laughs> yeah, for the money. I see. Jinju says, them boys was touching each other, then participated in her murder. How demonic. Yeah. Lakeisha says, <laughs> it says, Mr. Matthew, not Mr. Oh, Mrs. Man, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> it sure does. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm really sorry. Um, yeah, I'm like super sleepy. I have another channel, The Real Estate Apostle. And um, I was really working on that channel before this channel started to blow up a, a few weeks ago. And I literally been trying, literally, literally been trying to not trying, but I've been doing both, been going live on both, you know, trying to build both of them up and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, thank y'all for catch, uh, keeping me <laughs> with these typos and um, <laughs> Freudian slips. <laughs> thank you, Lakeisha. I appreciate that. <laughs> Mrs. Matthews, thanks you too. <laughs> thank you so much. And please forgive me. <laughs> please forgive me. Jinju says that Ty Lieber, you're most welcome. <laughs> right. And Mrs. Matthew says testosterone is very different than estrogen. Exactly right. And uh, we always do our little, um, we hear about our science, and now I can't find my skeleton. <laughs> science and um, math and science here. So when we ever questioning these little genders and stuff, we go back to the skeleton and um, we show from there. I don't even know where I've done with my skeleton, <laughs> my little replica here that I used to do my little anatomy and physiology lesson on. Thank you. I see MAC says, I'm sorry, Ty Lieber says that MAC. Yes, indeed. The resort was gated with security everywhere. Wow. And because there haven't been new updates, folks are starting to scrutinize the behavior of Shanquilla's mom and sister. 
We all deal with death and grief differently. Black folks are always harder on our own. Yeah. And then too, y'all, people are like, they're just trying to make up stuff. Like I said earlier, when I went to look there, there wasn't nothing. And people were having sites, you know, talking about they're having seances with the spirits and of Shan Qu I mean, just people are just doing ridiculous stuff. And now they don't have anything else better to do than to sit there and to, um, you know, harass and um, say mean things to the family about how they're grieving. It's super disgusting. Super, super disgusting. And Reed says, I went to Cabo in June. It was one of my better vacations. 2500 for four days, three nights, 10 paid for the trip. We all had our room and exquisite views. Hacienda at Okay, Edith. A hacienda Edith. Okay, so y'all still busy say true. Promoting for um Mexico. I say no more Mexico. Don't go to Mexico. Blessings for both channels, Queen. Thank you so much. Yeah. And um, you know, uh the recent monetization um for the um channels has been, you know. <laughs> It's just been a very like a you know a roller coaster, and I'm trying to keep up with everything and um, keep them you know separate but equal, <laughs> separate but equal. Yes. And Mrs. Matthew says, ever since seeing how the late Jackie O conducted herself at her husband's funeral, JFK's, how Dr. Betty Shabazz com comported comported herself at her husband's funeral class dignity i it thought many not to cry it taught i'm sorry it taught many not to cry exactly and then too y'all there's stages of grief and we have to remember that this happened back in october so you know they've been grieving and crying and at one point you now you tell the story with sorrow and sadness you're not necessarily back at the stage where you can't hold back the tears even our chat and stuff has evolved from when we first started doing this. It was hard for, it was those of us that had sleepless nights. I, it was hard for me to get through the stream without breaking down crying. It was, you know, we were all doing that, but now more time has gone on. So we start looking more towards the celebration of the person's life and, you know, um, the memories of it and all that stuff. So there's less tears. You know, it's not even healthy to stay in the whole crying, grieving part of it. You know, now you start coming off into other parts of it and you have to, um, you know, move on. You know, you can't always just be um, crying and sad. You still have to, you know, life, you know. Yes. Uh, did I? OK. Um, uh, Mrs. Matthew says a lot of elders from her era do not grieve publicly. Yes. Grieving is private for many. People. They don't owe us their tears to be seen and they might be angry. Yeah. Yes. Yes, indeed. It's super true. Yeah. A few streams ago, we actually had um, we were all discussing a lot of things regarding um, how people um, even put away their um, loved ones and stuff like their final preparations and stuff. Mrs. Matthew said as they should be. Yes. And we says they are probably in shock. Yeah. And then to imagine, we've all experienced, um, you know, uh, the losing of a loved one, but for it to be so public and so brutal, you know, people feel helpless when somebody is, um, you know, taken out of here. You know, it's a lot different from somebody, you know, it's uh, expiring from a terminal disease or cancer or, or even a car accident, you know. It's different when somebody, you know, actually, and then for it to be videotaped like that, that's, that's, that's horrible. And nobody knows how that feels, but the people that's had to experience that. And then we see that this is common stuff, right? This is common stuff over here in Mexico. You know, this wasn't no one time, you know, you know, uh, isolated incident. This was not that. Yeah. All right, so um, Lamike says, having studied, um, having studies shown the testosterone level 
of women is rising. I don't know. I didn't hear nothing like that. <laughs> so uh -uh, I haven't heard nothing like that. You know, who knows? They're probably putting all kinds of stuff, you know, hormones and stuff in the meat that we're eating. Mrs. Matthew says sympathy, sympathy, envy could be the thing too. Some may resent the outpouring of love sent to the Robinsons and donations. Thus, they scrutinize their every flinch, it, it, every everything is maddening. Yes, you're absolutely right. Yeah, because somebody else was even out here in the chat, you know, saying, you know, I hope they spend in the money certain ways, just being real judgmental and stuff like that. You're absolutely right. You know, it's always going to be haters out there and these jealous people will say these kind of mean, horrible statements. And Mrs. Matthew says, and such a shocking way to go. Yeah, make some loved ones numb. Yeah. Ajinju says, broke back mountain between Kali and Nazir. Okay. I never saw the movie, but I, I do know that it's supposed to be about, you know, um, some, uh, um, I don't even know which word we're supposed to use, but um, to, uh, an XY. <laughs> Two XY chromosomes getting together. <laughs> Is that safe to say too? Like I said, y'all nurses, we don't be trying to fumble around with our words so we don't have time for that stuff. You gotta, you know, you either uh, any or Audi, right? <laughs> so here we go. Um, Mrs. Matthew says any untimely exit can make one numb. Exactly. Yes. Yes. I just remember Winter saying Quilla did something stupid. While she was drunk, no remorse whatsoever, stone cold blooded. Yes, I remember hearing that too. And I did feel that way too, that it was um, very cold. And like I said, y'all, these are clues, right? This this ain't, she was cold. This ain't the first time that she said something or came across as cold. So you want to listen to the people that you were around and stuff like that and see, you know, I mean, see how they're talking to you and stuff like that because. If you really just kind of meditate on it and really listen from within, you'll be able to hear the clues. You'll be able to see the signs when somebody is jealous of you and will be cold and not have any remorse, right? Didn't even shed a tear. Wasn't even, you know, sor sorry or nothing that, you know, Shanquil is not here. Actually was blaming her, you know, like she had it coming, you know? Mrs. Matthew says, like into the yin yang symbol, naturally there's a little testosterone in naturally born females, but more estrogen, conversely, a little estrogen in naturally born males, but more testosterone. Exactly. Yes. We we all have both, but um, definitely XY chromosomes is going to have more and XY chromosomes is going to have less testosterone. And X, X chromosome is going to have more estrogen because we need that for what, what we are designed for, which is um, creating, not creating, but carrying babies and um, having babies. You know, that's what we create for. Ms. Matthew says, um, <laughs> good morning, uh, GMO, synthetic hormones, that another story, albeit an artificially flavored one. Yes. So, okay, so we got a few more minutes and we will finish up this video here so we could um, stay on task here. Why did Mexico blame all of these women for their own deaths when there are obvious signs blame of trauma shifting. at the hand of someone else? Because self-inflicted deaths remove any and all responsibility to investigate and prosecute responsible parties. Yep. That's why. In each of these cases and so many more, Mexican officials covered up the violence, lied on the autopsies, failed to properly investigate, failed to bring charges against perpetrators, victim blamed, saying they did it to themselves. Wow. But the truth is, despite the 30 to 70 years of prison time for the crime of femicide, 97% of <gasps> femicides. 97%? Go unpunished.
Teresa Rodriguez, a sociologist at the National Autonomous University of Mexico says, the attempt to blame Ariana Lopez for her own death by drinking too much falls into a pattern of victim blaming common in Mexico. Wow. It is a question of culture and bias among experts, doctors, forensic specialists. Any woman who has reported a crime knows this. This is courtesy of CBC News. And that's why victims are silent and quiet because you see what's happening here? People getting checked up out of here. So why am I going to say something? Ariadna's family had not insisted it would have looked like an accident. Why does Mexico want to avoid investigation and prosecution of violent crimes? Because they corrupt. One reasons is the fact they want you, dear traveler, to feel like it's a safe place. Now we're back at the question. Wow. Why, why were the doctor and first responders so brazen to lie on the police report, even when they knew it could be challenged with empirical <laughs> evidence? It's because it's what they've been doing. It's part of their game. Culture. Okay. Routine. It's the norm. Yep. It's customary. Wow. It's business as usual. Yep. You saw it for yourself. Another doctor, official, investigator, medical examiner, 1,200 miles away, did wow. the exact thing the very day after. Cookie cutter. Cookie cutter. Do the same thing. Rosh, rinse, and repeat. Or Chanquilla's case. And so many other instances exist. So yes, the doctor and the first responders lie. Yes, they are morally bankrupt for doing it. Yes, they may have taken a bribe. Yes, yes, yes. All of that is possible. Wow. But even more nefarious and reprehensible is the system that provides refuge Thank you. for the liars, the bribes, the cover-ups, yes. and the femicide impunity. Were wow. it not for the families fighting for their loved ones, the public outcries and the protests, they would all have been. Look at that, y'all. Just, just change the words here for justice for Shanquilla. See that? Look at there. They got the same thing. It's just somebody else in Spanish. It's the same thing, y'all. accidents. Were it not for Gerardo lighting the spark, then Black Twitter creators, bloggers, and Black media fanning the flames, and now mainstream media catching the heat, yeah. Shanquela's case would have been ruled an accident. Yeah. So don't stop telling their stories. Don't stop posting support for justice. All right. She's don't stop right. hashtagging. Don't stop saying their names until we have justice for them all. Yes. Devani Escobar, Yolanda Martinez, Maria Fernanda, wow. Leslie Berlin, Ariana Lopez, Chanquela Robinson. All right. Justice for Chanquela. Yes. Great job. Yes, yes, yes. That was excellent. And that was just, you know, a random pick there. That was awesome there. She, um, you know, it was kind of hard to hear some of that stuff. You know, again, it just reminds me that I'm right about, I don't think we're going to get any justice from um, Mexico and that we need to start focusing on keeping the voice out there, but, you know, geared towards the FBI, um, like we were saying too. So, wow. That's amazing though, you know. Kind of, you know, like we said, we had kind of stumbled up on it. And now just kind of just really, you know, really, I never saw that movie. <laughs> um, this kind of just reinforces it. Mrs. Matthew says, match in logic. Yes. What could she have done that was so stupid to wait till the next morning to wake her up from her bed to be met with barbaric, barbarism, barbarism? Bar barbarian some <laughs> yes exactly right exactly because especially i mean like a real person would have calmed down even if somebody did something that was extremely upsetting to you to let it sit and fester that just shows your moral decay that you holding on to something like you now really being intentional about the weakness that you're trying to put out there because you should have cooled off. You had time, right? Had time to cool off. You see, <laughs> Psych 101, most bullies blame the bully for their unhinged actions. Exactly. Like we said, these narcissists are notorious for blame shifting. They're never going to take accountability 
responsibility for their own action. They're going to blame you. And these abusers blame, make the, you know, blame the victims, victim shame. And that's why they come back to them when they start to try to, um, you know, love bomb them, tell them they're not going to do it anymore. So it's real important to identify these red flags too. Yep. Blame shifting is something that they do. In Max says the only way their individuals conscious have eaten them up alive. They've all had to falsely validate their actions and silence to themselves. Yep. Yeah. But, you know, people like that, some of them really don't have a conscience. So, you know, we sit up here thinking, oh, yeah, I hope you die from guilt or I hope you, you know, can't take it because you're just going to feel too guilty and just tell your secret or whatever. People that are that diabolical don't have a conscience. Like they're not losing any sleep. They're really agitated that they have to keep hiding and ducking and diving. They can't be out free to do what they want openly. They're more annoyed at the inconvenience of this whole thing, you know, not because they feel in scared or shame or anything like that. Yeah. Says Miss Rob, uh, Mrs. Matthews, exactly. So disrespectful too, because she is gone. Yes. Yep. Let's see. Um, they should really force women to be kind to other women. The mindless um, cattiness needs to cease. I agree, you know, like we were saying over here that we have been conditioned as women to view other women as our enemies. And this is all part of, you know, keeping us all individual so nobody will join together because there's strength in numbers, right? So the more we keep ourselves isolated, then we will be targeted you know, look, looked at as victims, right? So we'll be targeted for somebody to come by and victimize. That's why it's important that we learn how to love ourselves. That way we'll be available to love other women. And once we start loving ourselves as women and loving other women, we're going to elevate our standards, we're elevate our self-esteem to where we're not going to be accepting abusive treatment from anybody because we're going to be so full of ourselves and so confident and so in love with ourselves that we will not allow anybody to abuse us. The more you, the more whole you are, the less likely you are to continue the abuse cycle. So it's super important to get healed. Yes. It was very alarming the news that we were finding out there. So, um, you see, Mrs. Matthews says, we've heard about that many women, girls go through in India. Okay, the Middle East had no idea about Mexico too. Wow. Yes, like I said, I, I had looked and saw Mexico was number five in the world. And I'm sure over in the Middle East, it's even worse because women's lives are even less valued over there to where there's now a big influx of more males than females because um, especially in China where they, you know, had the little one child law and a lot of times baby girls were being, you know, you know, um, yeah. And they were keeping the baby boys and stuff like that. And then there's this, there's this um, more value is placed on the male child's and, women's lives really haven't had that much value. So women have been allowed to be, you know, unalive by men for forever and nothing happens to them. They just turn the other way and, you know, nothing happens. So that makes, that leaves the women that are left behind less likely to speak out, less likely to, you know, try to say or stop the abuse because look what happened to the other woman when she tried, right? You know, and like I said, you only have to be on a live once to, you know, be game over. Mrs. Matthew says, recall those episodes of the Oprah show when she'd repeat, if you're a girl born in America, consider yourself lucky. She traveled the world. So my ears perked up when she'd emote such. Yeah, that makes a difference, too, when you travel a lot. A lot of times, unfortunately, we Americans are least you know, in the travel department. So a lot of us haven't even left out of the country. That's why it's super important. Get your passport and go check out some more places and stuff. Get, you know, get, get some stamps on your passport and go see how it is to 
be in other places and stuff. And you'll see how um, America is really not that popular in a lot of other countries, you know, not really liked too much. <laughs> um, beautiful woman, yes. Ernie says, I'm so glad that you put this on your platform. I was watching this before I switched over to watch your show. God is revealing what's going on over there. Exactly. And that this was super eye opening for me um, and too for a lot of people, especially as Americans, like the term, this term femicide was something new, like we never really used it over here. And now it's starting to become more prevalent and stuff like that. And we see um, how and why, too, you know, so even though they, they haven't really ranked us over here, this femicide is pretty high over here in America, too, you know. It's high over here, too. We just haven't been calling it that, right? <laughs> we just haven't been calling it that. But uh, women have been, you know, getting checked out of here by these men, and nothing's happened to these men for a while, and not just in these other countries. It's right here, too. Right here, too. You see, psychopaths have no conscious. Yep, Psych 101. That is true. No conscious. Good point. Yep. And that's why you can't befriend them or anything like that, because, you know, they're not going to just grow close to you and be like, yeah, I'm not going to um, hurt her because, you know, she's nice. Her class, Psych 101. Yep. Those born via lust hold a completely different psyche than those that were conceived via real righteous love. He added that the latter is rare, like unicorn rare. Yes, that's true. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You people are born with these negative spirits and stuff. You're right. These um, lustful spirits. Lust nuts, his words, are malcontent, very competitive, lack empathy, conscious, etc. Yeah. I agree with you. Let's see here. Uh, Mrs. Matthew says, ever since the movie, Not Without My Daughter, starring Sally Struthers, Hadn't seen in years, but it was compelling. Yes, I remember that movie, too, because, you know, they got married here in America. It seemed like things <laughs> was going good. Then they went to his country and then he, boom, the mask fell off. And it was, I was scared about that. I was really scared about that. And uh, yeah, that was a good movie. <laughs> good one for bringing that one up. Yep. Mrs. Matthews says, Hence the maxim, the maxim, those that do not travel will never know the value of man, unknown. Okay. Cool. All right. Let's see here. Ms. Matthew said, it's believed that real hurricanes, tornadoes denotes OYA is mad at how women are treated. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Is mad how women is treated good. So we need to, um, you know, good. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, we could start making some changes here. And, and that should start to bring a lot of different changes to the world once we start valuing women, valuing our women. Real tsunamis. Let's see. What is this here? Ye Moja. Yema. <laughs> Yem, Yemaya is mad. Yamaya is mad at how women children are treated. Yes. If you read the book Homeo Serpents by A.K. Pierce, what the earth will have to do to restore sane balance on her axis. Homo, okay, we'll have to um, check that out. Yeah, how y'all feel about maybe um, throwing in some books and stuff like that, too? This is, um, like I said, this is all new for me, too. And, um, you know, we just kind of going with the flow here and, um, you know, doing all this good stuff. So um, this really is going to be, okay, here we got some more stuff here. <laughs> Ty Lever says, justice for Shanquilla. And um, also look up, they allegedly wanted, wanting to unlike only females trees. Oh, wow. Hmm. Yes, book reviews. I'll be awesome. I'm with it. Okay. 
Cool. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, but we build in the community, y'all. And um, you know, I'm getting better with my little technical skills and all that stuff too. And you know, y'all is gonna see something, you know, by the end of this year, this whole um channel is going to perk up. And what I'm doing on my other channel is really about empowering um individuals, middle-aged people, really, my um Gen X on how to overcome the fear of leaving behind your job to start a business, be an entrepreneur, be your own self. And, you know, we talk about different streams of income. I have, I'm a Turo host. I'm a licensed realtor also. And y'all know I'm a retired nurse. So I still have a nurse's license, different um, stream, multiple streams of income, something I always push in because if you have your finances together, it's going to help you with your self-esteem. It's going to help you to be able to heal because you're not going to be worried and concerned about your money you know money really does solve a lot of problems and it helps helps you tremendously and miss matthew says dr Catherine northrup her book women's health women's wisdom she wrote to how naturally women are connected to the earth gender envy is a real thing okay thank you so much for giving a, a, a word for that. Gender envy is a real thing, real danger if we don't study. Wow. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Because I'm pretty sure that's why the gender of this Dejanay person keeps coming into question because if that's the case, the amount of rage and fury that was unleashed on her explains it because of this gender envy. Wow. Deep. Exactly. What it denotes to be born an organic woman. Yes. Wow. I don't believe that there was a seizure. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Yeah. I agree with you on that. No time. No time for that. All right. So since we all in agreement that, you know, we still going to keep um, the gestures for um, hashtag just for Shanquilla alive and, you know, thriving. Um, this is a good thing. And, you know, I'm glad that we had opportunity to see some new videos and also to continue to build on our foundation that we put out here together. So thank you all for coming out here and keeping me <laughs> keeping me straight here and love you all. And I'll see you all tomorrow. And um, I think, um, what about the times too, y'all? I'm trying to, you know, like today, like I said, I then did three lives, I'm trying to see about the times, what are good times um, for people. I know there are some West Coast people that, um, you know, watch me. And, um, but um, for y'all, what's y'all, what's a good time for y'all? Let me see here. Anybody say anything? Shan is exo study. Um, I don't know what that word is there. I leave it there. All right. So, um, and my eyes are really sleepy and tired, y'all. And it, it was my birthday and I did a whole bunch of birthday stuff too. And I still came through and, um, you know, loved on y'all with these, um, three lives. <laughs> and, um, let's see here. I think 10 to 10 30 is good. Oh, like what we just did? Okay, cool. That's that's fine. And I'll do um, my Real Estate Apostle channel in the earlier time. Perfect. All right, cool. All right, perfect. Well, then I shall... Okay, somebody, another one for 10. Courtney say 10 is good too. Okay. So that was about what time we started on tonight then. And I'll just um, be um, more prepared. And thank y'all too for the people that were sending me the stuff for the emails with different stuff too. So I'm always open, you know, y'all put y'all's offerings up in there. This is our community. I work 10 hour shifts, but today is my Friday. <laughs> okay. So yeah, what is today? Oh, this here is um Thursday. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Well, then I will see y'all tomorrow. Love y'all. Peace and love and good night. all. <laughs> see y'all tomorrow.